Hi guys, it seems any measures to stop MPs from having more than one job have yet to be implemented because the newly minted Reform UK MP Lee Anderson was back at his old job on GB News. Now, I truly feel sorry for anyone who appears as a guest on the show, and even more so for anyone who has to try and explain something more complicated than opening a bottle of water to Lee Anderson. Two guests tried this, and you could feel their pain as they dealt with Lee Anderson's ridiculous points. Have a listen to this. The Labour Party have said they're going to be very robust on this issue. They're going to process, you know, 100,000 claims. But the question's still the same, Fally. The failed asylum seekers, where are they going to go? The bulk of claimants or applicants come from Syria, Iran, Afghanistan, yeah. Sudan. Yeah. Eritrea. Eritrea. Yeah. And you just can't have, at present, because of the political climate and yeah. situation in yeah. those countries, you yeah. can't have agreements with those countries. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the logistics, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Mm. And that's where the majority of applicants are. But you're an immigration lawyer, Fadi. Right? So you're a specialist, you're the man, in the know. Why do they leave France, a safe country, to come to this country? Because, contrary to popular perception, the 1951 Refugee Convention, which is the source law at the heart of this entire framework, yeah does not require you to claim asylum in a... Yeah, but that's not answering my question. What is, yeah. well, what is it about France that they don't want to stay there? They well, want you've to only got to look at linguistic ties, um, the, the labour market, which is perhaps more relaxed or yeah. deregulated here. Yeah. Um, so various, various factors, language, the market conditions, fa existing family members here. So what happens is, is migrational patterns feed migrational yeah. patterns. So where you have an existing family structure mm. in the UK. And why are probably 80 to 90 percent of these people coming across on boats young men? Poor factors. Poor factors. Labour market. Uh, delivery economy. Ah, oh, so we, we're getting to the uh, we're getting to the truth now, Tom, are we? So they're not fleeing war-torn countries. They're not... <sighs> they are fleeing war-torn countries, but they're attracted to the United Kingdom because of the points that were raised here. Linguistic factors. If they speak English, they're more likely to go to Britain than to stay in France. If they have friends and family in Britain, they're, going more, they're more likely to try and claim asylum in Britain than in France. Why is this so difficult for Lee Anderson to understand? It, it sounds logical to most reasonable people. Like If Lee Anderson had to flee Britain, there was some catastrophe and he wanted to flee Britain, would he prefer to go to Ireland, where maybe he has some connections there, where he speaks the language, or would he go to France? Why is this so difficult? Fleeing for safety. Many of them will not be being economic. persecuted. Look, why, why isn't there an equal number of women and children that's fleeing these war-torn countries? Yeah. Because we haven't, as a country, set up safe and legal routes other than the Hong Kong scheme and the Ukrainian scheme. How many Ukrainian men of working age are currently in the United Kingdom? Uh, because we have set up a formal scheme in order to bring those oh, how many? How Ukrainian... Many so, like, once again, why is this so difficult to understand? If there are safe routes, then the women and children will take those safe routes. If there are no safe routes, it's more likely that young men will go. Because it's dangerous. You know, it, you're, you're in a much safer position if you're a young man. You can defend yourself around dangerous individuals as a young man. It's not always the case. Then if you're a woman... And you're a woman with a child. Once again, why is this so difficult for Lee Anderson to understand? Well, it's uh, well over 80,000, I think. Yeah. I mean, Fadi, you'll probably know yeah. the exact figures. Yeah. But just coming back to your question, because I will answer it. I mean, you asked the question, where do these people go? Yeah. And the truth is, at the moment, we can't change the fact they are here, 100,000 that are undocumented, yeah. that have come over since Rishi Sunak uh, went down the blind alley that is the Rwanda scheme. Um, and they're costing oh. us... £8 million pounds a day in hotels. Yep. Yep. They can't work. If they have health care needs, we have to give them their health care needs. Yep. That's just being a civilised country. And on your point, actually, about what's going on in northern France, I mean, I've been there, and you see, actually, you, you know, frankly, the way the French treat the migrants, is no wonder they want to get on yeah, a boat. Yeah, because they won't claim asylum. I've been you there. Know, they're I, not putting those people in force. Tom, I've hotels, been there as well. And the reason they're in the tents, living on pallets in northern France, is, is because they refuse to claim asylum in France. Yes. Yes, because they don't want to stay in France. Why would somebody... If somebody claims asylum in France, they have to stay in France. They don't want to stay in France because of the points that were raised earlier. 
They have no connection to people in France. They don't speak the language. Would Lee Anderson, if he was seeking asylum somewhere, would he stay in a country where he doesn't speak the language and he has no family connections? Or would he try and make it a little bit further to a place where he has family connections and he speaks the language? I'll leave the final word yeah. on this one. Turn backs in the channel. Would that work? Would that be a deterrent? So this, before we get to the response, this is a typical Reform UK response to immigration. We turn back the boats. We send them back to France. We put people on a, on a dinghy and we drive it back to France or we go back to France and we drop them off. It makes no sense, but this expert here will explain why. That would be problematic under the current legal framework on international law because... This is, and this is the thing, I keep, you know, I've, I've mentioned it in Parliament many, many times. What happens if we ignore international law and just do it? <laughs> People voted for this guy. People actually voted for Lee Anderson. Like, what did they... Like, it's not like Lee Anderson dropped out dropped out of the the latest cloud in the sky he's been around for some time and people after all the rubbish that he has talked all the stupid statements he's made in parliament turned around and said yeah let's let's vote for lee anderson again let's give him another go does somebody come well, out and slap the old bracelets the, the, on? The thing with international law is there isn't a enforcement or police yeah. body, yeah. so nothing will happen in, in, in the sense of any direct physical consequence. So we could do it. But it would then raise accusations of being a pariah state, a state that doesn't um, comply with the rule of law, that yeah. is not um, subscribed to the um, rules-based yeah. framework, and that, that would be the problem. Because you've got a, you've got 12 miles six miles of which are in French waters, yep. six miles of which are in British waters. Yep. So the French won't do anything in their six mile uh, straight. Apart from escort them over. Uh, well, uh, but then as soon as they cross the six miles um, in Fre of French waters, they're then in, in, yep. in British waters yep. whereby um, uh, the UK has territorial jurisdiction okay. over them and that's where they can claim asylum. Well, so. guys, I Once again, why is this so difficult for somebody to understand? Lee Anderson is, is incapable of understanding these things. I don't think it's him pretending not to understand. I actually think he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand simple concepts, like the rule of law. Well, what if we just ignore the rule of law? Yes, as was pointed out, Britain would become a pariah and there'd be consequences. Like, you would gain a small advantage of keeping crazy people happy for about five minutes by, okay, let's break international law. But the consequences for Britain would be profound becoming a pariah state sanctions could be imposed upon britain businesses would be boycotting britain countries would be boycotting britain they would decide we're not going to trade with this pariah state and of course it would damage britain's reputation on the world stage because if you're willing to break international law in one way then of course you're going to break interna international law in other ways how could any diplomat go around the world and say, trust us, trust us to uphold the law or to uphold a treaty? Well, the response would be, well, you've, you've already declared that you're going to break international law when it comes to immigration. So why would we trust you to uphold international law in, in any other field? It's absolutely ridiculous. Once again, why would somebody vote for this idiot? What's wrong with people? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.